okay so this reiterating guys uh, in this uh, lecture we will be talking about uh, matrices and shailesh over to you okay thank you vipul uh, so hi guys uh, today uh, i'll be talking about matrices uh, but before that uh, i'd like to cover some uh, fundamental aspects of vectors which is crucial for us to look forward and cover matrices mm. i'll just turn on my video okay so yeah i'll be talking about uh, vectors in a more abstract setting and also also about linear transformations linear dependence linear independence basis vectors span as you can just uh, look a brief overview of the topics i'm going to cover today so i just uh, hope most of you have covered linear algebra uh, some of you may not have but uh, people who have gone through an engineering course uh, you people must have covered uh, linear algebra but uh, i'm not going to delve into much of linear algebra but uh, i'm going to give you a, a good amount of intuition so that we can think about matrices in a more intuitive and geometric way so that might help you uh, understand how operations in matrices really work so so just uh, start with it uh, i'm sorry today i'll not be uh, able to write on my screen i'll just uh do it on a piece of paper so i'll just start with it uh, vipul can you just confirm if my screen is visible if my video is visible yeah yeah it's very readable clearly yeah yeah absolutely it's readable okay yeah. okay so i'll begin with it at least there's what we call vectors in physics so in physics uh what you thought of vectors was something like this something with a tail and an arrow and this something like 1 comma 2 something like that so which basically uh gave us some direction which just arrow speaks about and a magnitude uh how far or what is the strength of this vector not appropriately speaking but uh this gives you basically an idea uh, about the length of the vector and the direction of the vectors so when you just talk about this in a cartesian plane this would this vector would correspond to something like this so we'll talk about vectors in terms of column vectors i mean this would be a row and this would be a column i think that's not very hard to understand so uh, you'll get shortly why i'm why i'm talking about vectors in terms of columns uh, because that would be useful for our linear algebraic machinery okay so in physics this was mostly used to give you uh, direction displacement force especially force velocity displacement uh it was a pretty useful idea back then in physics and it's still a useful idea for us to understand uh pretty geometric aspects of vectors what vectors are but it is not just independent to physics or it's not just not just independent to direction and magnitude i think all of you are coders are programmers so you must have seen something like this you can also think about this as list of numbers that's what computer science people will think of it as list of numbers this can be thought of as list of numbers right uh, and it's good enough to just think it uh, think it uh, think of it as list of numbers but what linear algebra will do for you it will it will give you an interplay between this motivation and just uh what do you think of it as list of numbers or list of attributes 
or anything that numbers might uh, represent anything but uh, it gives you a position these are different positions so uh, these are independent of the other coordinates uh, if you want to call it that so it will uh, what linear algebra will do for you it will give you a, a good interbrain physics computer science and proceeding in a more mathematical way we will develop the machinery of linear algebra we'll talk about what a vector can mean uh, what is a range uh, what all can be thought of as a vector okay and it will be pretty surprising to know that uh, it can be so many other things not just this typical physics vector but well, this will help you to understand a lot about uh, how it how something like a linear transformation works or how something like a matrix what does a matrix really mean when you uh, think about it in a mathematical way not just in a numerical way moving forward uh, so i would just uh, like to mention that uh, uh, we will be using this cartesian coordinate plane for us uh, to represent vectors because this is of course has been very handy in explaining many physical concepts and geometric concepts and it's of course it's one of the most uh, what do you call it the reference the point of reference the reference frame for us so uh, yeah so i'll give you uh, two ways to think about this vector this just consider one two so here it was it was something like a, a direction it gave you a direction but if you just fill this place with vectors it, it becomes quite clumsy as to what a vector might mean because if i just uh, cover this a uh, plane with arrows it will be a mess okay so uh, a pretty good way to think about vectors i'll just consider this as the origin i i i i'm just supposing everybody knows what this plane is okay so this is basically the x and the y okay so this is our origin okay so going from this understanding i could just consider 1 2 to be just this point on the cartesian coordinate plane okay instead of thinking it as vectors so one being this distance two being this one so finally reaching this point okay so we will be think about uh, we can be thinking about uh, vectors in terms of what we thought about in physics or just as points on the plane uh right now i'm talking about an r2 that means a plane because uh, that will give you a geometric understanding of the subject uh when we move more abstractly when we go towards the subject more abstractly you can talk about uh, higher dimensional uh, vectors but that can be left for you because uh, once i get along once you get along with the subject you will pretty much catch up with it so okay so about vectors okay here in a plane okay talking about an r2 as i said we'll be thinking about vectors in terms of points these are points on the plane okay like 1 comma 2 or 3 1 this can be just thought about uh, thought of as you know moving three spaces towards x axis and moving one here so this is three and one so can you can you come out come up with a way of representing this entire space with just a couple of vectors or more you know can you represent this entire plane in terms of just one vector or two vectors what i mean to say is uh if you can recall in physics a force if you just want to put a bar on it just to represent this is a vector but that's not explicitly required because it's understandable so you might have come across this notation something like this so what does this mean this just says it's Three units 
across the x component and one unit across the y component. So that's that. Or you can also write this as 3x bar on y bar. What are these? Have you ever wondered about this? What are these? Usually called as a unit vectors. So what are these unit vectors? Can you give a vector form to this unit vector? What are these? This is what in mathematics we call as basis vector. I'll try as much as possible not to get lost in jargon, but uh, I think this would be pretty simple terminology. If you, if you happen to just recall that, it'd be great, but I'll introduce this. Basis vector. So I'll just uh, ask you to just remember certain terms as basis vector, because I'll be using that further. Uh, for you to understand linear transformations. So what this basis vector does, it is, instead of talking about this entire space and infinite number of vectors on this plane, you can just think about the entire plane as represented with the help of these two vectors, okay? If there's any vector, A, B, on this plane, I can definitely represent this as A, I cap, the G, plus B, J cap, uh, which is the same as, what is this? What, what are these I and J? What, what are these unit vectors? What are these vectors? In the plane. So these unit vectors, it can be thought of as, this is the unit vector in x direction and in, in the y direction, this is the unit vector, right? This x cap, this is y cap. So all the vectors in this plane, in the R2 plane, as I would call it mathematically, it will be an easy way to call it R2. And since you have already been introduced with metric spaces and uh, real numbers, I think you understand what this means. Okay. In vector form, I think it's pretty easy to understand that this is one comma zero or one zero. And Y is zero one. So it's just one unit towards the X direction and zero units towards the Y direction. Similarly, the y unit vector is zero units towards the x direction and one unit towards the y direction. And using just these two vectors, you can represent any to any vector on this plane, any vector, right? As I just showed you, any vector can be represented using these two vectors. And these two vectors would be called our basis vectors. Why I'm talking about basis vectors? Because you know, talking about transformations, when you when you when we will talk about transformations on this space, instead of talking about how each vector is transformed, okay, a transformation can just mean you know a function. What is a transformation? If I'm using the word transformation, what is a transformation exactly? Okay, it's just a function. Okay, it's a function. It's a fancy name for function, you can call it. Okay, so it just takes uh, a value. Maybe I'm giving you an example from R to R. For example, sine of X. It takes values from, values from real numbers. It gives values in real numbers, okay? Okay, so this is the transformation. So it, sine of zero, it goes to zero. Sine of pi upon two it goes to one but this is a transformation of this number it transforms this number to one okay this is a function it is a mapping to call it so now why basis vectors why i'm talking about basis vectors is first of all you can talk about uh, all vectors in terms of basis vectors and what is it what it is technically called is linearly 
independent vectors linearly independent vectors that is that means we cannot represent x in terms of y and y in terms of x x cap in terms of y cap and y cap in terms of x cap that means you cannot obtain this vector from this can you can you by just a scalar multiplication can you okay you can give it a try i'm sure you cannot come up with this vectors using this using any multiplication if you just multiply this with any vector any uh, any scalar scalar would be any real number for our purposes here a scalar would just be a real number can you come up with this can you it would just mean 1 is equal to 0 which is not possible 1 is not equal to 0 this would not be possible okay so these vectors are linearly independent as we call it in linear algebra okay and linearly independent vectors play an important role for us to construct basis vectors that means the vectors which will allow us to span this is again another terminology span would just mean to cover the entire space okay that means in here these two vectors are the two vectors which will allow us to cover this entire plane this entire infinite plane not just on this piece of paper this entire infinite plane with just these two vectors these are two linearly independent vectors which which can be used to cover this entire plane technically it's just stated as two vectors Here x and y are two vectors. Okay, so I'll just the only way to construct the zero vector from these two vectors would be to put a is equal to zero and b is equal to zero. That is how explicitly uh, a linearly dependent vectors are thought of. How you define linearly independent? Uh, sorry, not dependent. Linearly independent. linearly independent vectors can be thought of as vectors such that the linear combination that means this is a linear combination this is what we call as a linear combination okay these are just terminologies i am introducing but the concepts are well known to you this is a linear combination just as force how did you represent that force vector that was a linear combination so the linear combination to get the zero vector so this zero is actually the zero vector okay the origin to give the zero vector the only way to come up to obtain the zero vector is by by substituting a equal to 0 and b equal to 0 that is what a linearly independent vector would mean you may not understand this now right now it's it's pretty fine it's, it's completely okay to not get what i'm talking about as linearly independent but just just think about this that these two vectors would enable us to span the entire plane the span span would just mean to cover the entire plane and this is a very a uh, it's a used term it's a common terminology in linear algebra span that means the span of these two vectors the span of x x cap and y cap would be r2 okay so we'll talk about span in terms of span of vectors uh how much space can these these vectors cover how much span can this cover what is the span of this vector if you just talk about this vector what is the span of this vector the span of this vector would just be the straight line would be the straight line right or the x axis to call it why we are talking about this basis i'll just come to I'll come to the point straight away is because we'll talk about you know there's the linear transformation so what is a linear transformation okay a linear transformation it is a function okay let me represent this as l it would be a function from a space let me call that space v okay now you are aware of metric spaces so this is not a metric space but let me just call it a space it is a vector space 
okay to suppose another vector space okay in a in a particular fashion suppose i'll just talk about here from r2 to r2 for our understanding we'll talk about transformations in r2 itself okay i'll show you certain animations for that but uh, if i talk about rotations okay if i rotate this entire plane to 90 degrees counterclockwise how would the vectors get transformed okay how would the vectors transform itself how would the vector 3 2 where would this vector go okay if i ask you about any random vector how where would this vector go how would you come up with an answer how would you come up with an answer okay 10 1 would be something like this vector something like this so this would some go somewhere here how would you exactly compute this the basis vectors the basis vectors as we call it would enable us to do this for enter so the entire r2 plane how would the plane look like how would the entire plane look like what does this transformation exactly mean and why is it called a linear transformation it will so this the transformation of the basis vectors how the basis vectors are transformed okay where does this go to where does these two vectors go to we'll speak all about this transformation uh, if i have gone too far with it uh, I, are you guys confused with it i just check i'll just check the charts okay okay so i'll move forward with it uh, i'll not speak about vector spaces explicitly vector space would be any space okay let me just let me just talk about it uh, i you might not get it from an abstract point of view right now it's fine you might it's a, it's a pretty it's a pretty easy thing but uh, what a vector space would be it is a, basically an abstract recipe for what uh how vectors would look like how would vector operate suppose a vector v and w there is an operation there is an addition operation in it okay that means two vectors can be added so now from now on i'll not necessarily be putting this bar notation above it to understand that it's a vector uh, when it's understood uh, i think it will be pretty clear when i'm talk uh, from the context that we are talking about vectors uh so there there is an operation defined on vector these can be anything okay is there a difference between a vector and a 2 by 1 2 by 1 matrix a 2 by 1 okay that means uh, what i was talking about okay uh, something like this okay this is a 2 by 1 matrix this has two rows and one, one column yeah so yeah so if i once i move toward matrices you will understand more what a matrix why why i'll be introducing something as something called as matrix what is the importance of a matrix okay right now we'll just do away with vectors how do we move from vector to matrices why do we move from vectors to matrices it would be clear in a while uh, once i talk about linear transformation it can be thought of as different uh, as just array of numbers too but thinking about that which just give you a numerical understanding of how what it is it's just the array of numbers but it's just not an array of numbers it is you can say it it is a code if you decode that uh, it gives you the how the entire transformation looks like okay suppose since you have, you guys have already seen what a matrix is suppose i okay what would this matrix look like so it's an array of numbers it's good enough to think of it as array of numbers but it is also a linear transformation which i am going to talk about in a while it's also a linear transformation what is a linear transformation i will talk about it uh it represents a function you can say it represents a function it is a representation of a function it is a representation of a function 
of a function or a transformation i'm sorry i was uh, speaking about vector spaces okay i'll come on um, towards matrices in a while uh, vector spaces would be any objects which which operates like vectors if you if you multiply vectors you can multiply vectors right something like a scalar multiplication that is you can multiply this vector by 3 to obtain 6 12 that is coordinate wise okay 3 multiplied by 2 and 3 multiplied by 4 so you can do something like this in a vector space you can just think of think of it as vectors purely as vectors because if i go into linear algebra it will take you an entire semester if not a semester at least a month to understand everything about it everything about linear transformation in an abstract setting so i'll just try to give you that overview in just one or two lectures so uh, sometimes i might be hand waving uh, please bear with that i might be hand waving um, but okay anything in a vector space it's an abstract setting so mostly uh, it happens very usually just like we did in metric spaces it was an attempt to generalize distances a space which uh, operates uh, in terms of distance uh, that was a metric space in a vector space something uh, where the objects are vectors and there are operations as in vectors as we had in vectors there is a scalar which which you can think of it as numbers any numbers which can be multiplied to a vector there are operations and i think uh, there is a commit uh, you can just how do we imagine addition of vector geometrically? Sure, I'll just show you that. I'll show you that. So, okay. Similarly, two vectors, uh, it's, it's independent of how you add it. It's commutative, basically. In mathematical language, it's commutative. Okay. Okay, addition of vectors, right. Uh, it's good that you reminded me. I just uh, skipped that part. Okay. It's, if you even think of it as numbers, that would be good enough. It's fine. Okay. Uh, if I talk about this, this vector, which is three one, right, and this vector, which is three zero, how would you add these two vectors, or what do you call in physics? What is the resultant of these two? Okay. So in physics, you knew that you can move this vector, okay? It was basically an idea to, you know, to to find out the result, and that means what is the total action of uh, operating with these two vectors, okay? So vector really you can easily add it as three one plus three zero, which gives you six and one. Component wise addition, component wise addition, okay? It can give you six one, or if you just think of it as, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this is not uh, three one, it is one three. I'm so sorry. Okay, so this would be four, and this would be three. Uh, that's a typing mistake. It's a typo. It's one three, the vector one three, and this is three zero. So physically, you can just Think of it as moving three units towards the right, another one unit towards the right. In the y direction, you're moving zero unit, uh, zero unit and three units. So basically, you're ending up, you're ending up in here. That was what the parallelogram was, law was, but that's pretty unnecessary in here. Okay, is just move this vector in here, and you can just complete the triangle, okay, all those stuff. This was vector addition. Or you can just think of it as exactly as basis, basis vectors. So that would be much more useful, that much more easier to think of it as basis vectors. That was moving towards x, x direction. How many units do you have to move towards x direction? That was four units. And three units towards the y direction. I'll just write that in mathematical language. Okay, so what we spoke about in here was one three and three zero so one three 
it can be written as which is exactly one times a unit vector in x direction three times a unit vector in the y direction okay and three zero can be thought of as three times a unit vector in x direction plus zero times a unit vector in y direction which is equivalent to saying this is okay so once you add this you can just add it straight away as four units in the x direction plus three units in the y direction that is what that is the usefulness of having a basis vector or a unit vector okay in here right now you can think of it as of basis vectors as unit vectors but that's not quite appropriate because unit vectors are of unit lengths too so not all basis might have unit length i'll give you an example of basis of the r2 plane okay which is not of unit length but it's still a basis vector so that is how you can add vectors okay which is there are many ways to think about it one was a resultant way that i showed you in here this was one way component wise addition which is exactly equivalent to this okay so this is the minimum number minimum number of vectors which is required to cover this entire space that is 2 and that is how we define dimension dimension of a space okay the minimum number for now you can minimum number of basis vectors how many vectors are required how many linearly independent vectors are required to span the entire plane that is that is what is the dimension of the space you talk about two dimension three dimension that is exactly how a dimension in mathematics is defined in a vector space a uh, linear algebra is a useful topic in ms but how do we really apply it yeah so okay this was pretty uh, trivial stuff i'll move towards linear transformation you'll exactly know how to apply it then once we talk about matrices and all just bear with me because once you start talking about mathematics you have to talk about pretty basic stuff too so you might get lost in math in the mathematics too uh, too much uh, it's it's also useful to get lost in mathematics for the mathematical sake but from an ml perspective uh, you you'll understand that in a short while once i talk about matrices and of course you use multi dimensional array and list of numbers in computer science so that uh, that way it will be really useful and dipul will delve into the core aspects of ml not me so yeah i just cover the mathematics in here but of course it will be really useful for you in ml because uh, once i talk about uh, linear transformations right away okay so i'll just show you an an animation but before that let me give an example of another basis vector okay of another basis vector which is different from this okay okay suppose i consider this as x this is y okay these are two perfectly fine basis vectors that means you can cover this plane you can cover r2 using just these these two vectors or the linear combination of these two vectors okay this is what we call as linear combination this ax plus dy okay this is a linear combination of this okay what a linear transformation does okay. i'll just show you an animation about linear transformation 
So here, this is how we're showing a linear transformation, an example. So, right, he spoke about linear transformation in terms of uh, representing it as the transformation of the grid lines, of these grid lines. Hey, Shalish, uh, sorry to interrupt. Your camera yeah. orientation is went like landscape. Can you make it back to portrait somehow? Sure, sure, sure. I'll just try it. Else we'll have to, you know, linearly transform ourselves. Uh, right, so... This is again a linear transformation. It's a 90 degree rotation. Uh, let's, uh, I'll just give it a try. If you like want to drop off and join back, you can do that if that makes it simpler. Oh, now it is, it's, okay. it's okay now. It's yeah. fine? Yeah. It's fine? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what he was speaking about uh, was how these grid lines, a simple example would be the rotation, okay? Would be a rotation, okay? A 90 degree rotation of space. So this is a linear transformation. Linear transformation, speaking from a geometric aspect, as he told you, is would keep, would keep all the grid lines parallel, Okay, the origin would go to the origin. Okay, and all lines would go to line. Okay, something which is a line would be transformed to a line. Okay, this line, while transformed, would look like this. Okay, in the transformation, this line would get transformed to this in the transformation. Okay, it's 90 degrees, it's not exactly 90 degrees as I drew it. Okay, uh, so basically I'd like to give credits to this video. Uh, it, it's from a channel three blue, one brown. He has pretty amazing stuff in his YouTube channel, good animations, and you can definitely use it as a resource for your learning. Uh, he, that was a pretty good uh, animation for you to understand. So I use that from a YouTube video channel. It's a YouTube channel, okay. <clears throat> right. So basically, in here, if you thought about the transformation, okay, you had to think about the transformation of the entire space. But what about how? What about the transformation of the basis vectors? How does the basis vector transform itself? Okay. Where does this go to? So once you rotate this nice, rotate this ninety degree clock anti-clockwise. This should go to this should go to the vector zero one, okay. So the I'll just uh, 
denote transform vectors with green. So this would transform to 0, 1. And where would this vector go? Where would 0, 1 go? It would go to this vector. Minus 1, minus 1, 0. So can just using these two vectors, you represent the transformation of the other vectors. How do other vectors, how do all the rest of other vectors get transformed? For example, if I take a simple example of P2, where does this vector go? Actually, just using the transformation of these two basis vectors, I can talk about the transformation of the entire plane. That's the advantage of having a basis vector. That's where matrices come in, into the picture. This is exactly where matrices will come into the picture. Okay? Uh, if I just for instance, just for instance, I'll just compute it in two different ways. Okay? So while in picture, this should trans this should transform itself to I don't know what uh, pictorially something like this, okay? Something which is which has a negative x coordinate, a positive y coordinate. We'll just check that. But uh, it suffices, okay? How does this transform? This transform itself in to zero one. This transforms itself to minus one zero, okay? So using just these two vectors, I'll construct a matrix, okay? I'll construct a a matrix right away. This matrix, which is basically speaking about the transformation of the vectors 1, 0 to 0, 1. That means the first column of this, vector, this matrix is a transform vector of, of the basis vector 1, 0. And this column represents the transformation of the second basis vector, which is 0, 1. And just the transformation of these two basis vectors codes up for us the entire transformation of the space. For example, if I want to know the transformation of the vector 3, 2, okay, you can think of it as. And think of matrix multiplication like this. That is, the x coordinate goes to the x unit vector goes to this vector. So this vector times the column vectors plus the y basis vector goes to minus one zero. So this vector times this column vector would give us the answer. It's zero three plus negative two, zero. So coming up with this transformation in a different way would have been a very difficult task. Not a very difficult task, but this was a very simple transformation, but for much more complicated transformation, uh, suppose a rotation or maybe a shear transformation. I'll just show you an animation for shear transformation again. Uh, I did not show you right now, but I'll show it to you. So this was for a 90 degree rotation. Where does this go to? Okay, this goes to this vector, negative two, three. So this is the advantage of having basis vectors, okay, or basis vectors. And this is how matrix multiplication can be thought of. Basically, in R2, okay, speaking, uh, why am I speaking of R2? Because that can be spoken about in a very geometrical fashion. And I can show you pictures for that, okay. For higher dimensions, you cannot have pictures, okay. So you can easily transform this uh, idea to higher dimensions, okay? Just for intuition, I'm showing you this in R2. So basically the transformation of the first, this is how the X unit vector got transformed, this is how the Y unit got, vector got transformed, okay? And this matrix, okay? So people can use this bracket or this bracket, it's, uh, it's your choice. Many books use this one. 
if you use this one, it's your choice. This matrix uh, basically codes up for you this entire transformation. So that's the advantage of having transformation of the basis vectors or, or basis vectors, okay? The basis vector can give you this entire picture, this clear picture of what other vectors would look like in the transformation. I'll give you another example of, suppose, this vector. Suppose one zero goes to this vector three one. Zero one goes to the vector one two. Okay. So how about the matrix of this transformation? Mind you, I'm speaking matrix of the transformation. It's a linear transformation. Okay. I've not spoken about what a linear transformation is, but uh, you will get the idea from this itself that this matrix operates as a function. Okay, this operates as a function. Basically, it is a function which takes vectors to something. Okay, it is a function. Okay, which takes this vector to something. Function L. Okay, this is a function. The matrix acts as a function. Okay, we'll go. We can talk about composition of function in terms of matrix multiplication, but that's for later part. Um, I'll just show you this example where I transform this vector three two two. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, transform the basis vector one zero to three one, and basis vector zero one to one two. So how would that matrix look like? The matrix would look like three one. One two. So this is basically the transformation of the unit vector x cap. This is the transformation for the unit vector y cap. Okay. This basically goes to l x cap, l y cap. Okay. So this is not the 90 degree rotation. This is just some transformation which is linear. Okay. So matrix would always represent a linear transformation. Any any numbers you can. You can put in any number that would represent a linear transformation. So you need not know what a linear transformation exactly is. Pictorially, you might. I'll show you. But you need not know what a linear transformation is. I'll tell you in a mathematical way, but you need not know what a linear transformation is. So for example, I'll just show you how the vector negative 1, 2 gets transformed. So it's simply... So it's always good to talk, think of matrix multiplication in this manner, matrix times a vector multiplication. Because the machinery, you might get lost in numbers, three times one, one times two, but that does not give you any understanding of how it actually works. This is how it actually works. Okay, this is exactly how it actually works. Okay. This is negative one. And this gives you a pretty easy way to come up uh, for an answer of the transformation of any vector. So this gets transformed to my negative one and three. That's the advantage of having basis vectors and thinking in terms of basis vectors. Uh, technically speaking, a linear transformation would just be a transformation which behaves like this. Mind you, not all transformation behave this way. That means you can you can break this into two parts in this manner. This is this is this is exactly why it's called linear. Why it's a linear map or a linear function or a linear transformation, as you call it. This is exactly why it's called linear. Okay, because this operates on vectors in this fashion. Okay, not all function, mind you, operates on vectors or on any numbers in this fashion, okay? Just for an example, for example, I'll show you the sine function, okay? Sine function, it is not equal to sine x times sine y. This is not equal to that, okay? Or the logarithmic function. This is not a linear transformation. This is not a linear transformation. Okay. 
the operation might change. So this is from one vector space to another vector space. So the operation might change. The operation addition here might mean something else, and here it might mean something else. Okay, but that would uh, put you deep into abstract mathematics. So I won't go into that. Uh, I'll leave it to you to read about that and speak about it in a later lecture too, if possible. Uh, this would be a linear transformation. Exponential. It's a linear transformation, but here the operation changes to multiplication. Uh, you might not get what I'm talking about in here, so it's 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 good to avoid it for now. But this is not a this is a tran linear transformation, but this is not a linear transformation because the function does not operate on it in this manner. Okay. So in mathematics, basically you talk about operation. It may be multiplication. It may be uh, addition. It may be any binary operation. Okay. Binary operation, uh, I think you know what a binary operation is. It is an operation on two elements. Okay, it's an operation on two elements. So this might be any binary operation. Addition is a binary operation. Multiplication is a binary operation. So this might be any bi binary operation. Okay, so the space might change. The operation might change. Okay, okay. The rotation. The rotation is a linear transformation. Okay. Rotation is a linear transformation. Uh, shearing. So what is shear is basically uh, if I have a book, if I have a book, okay, and you just push it this way. So this is shearing, okay. This if I push it in a horizontal manner, this is shearing, okay. So if I just Shear this plane, okay. I'll just uh, I'll show you an animation for that again. That how a shearing would look like, okay. I'll show you. That would again be a linear transformation. I'll share my screen again. The different types of transformation is showing. So basically, he was talking about in here as uh, I spoke to you about the basis vectors, how the basis vector gets transformed speaks about the transformation in all, in everything. It speaks everything about the transformation. I'll show you how 90 degree rotation would look like. 
So basically, this transformation, any transformation in here, if you put in any numbers inside the matrix, here it's one, two, and three, one. It will always be a linear transformation. It will always represent a linear transformation. It is inherent in the nature of a matrix okay, to represent a linear transformation. That is how really a matrix is to be thought about as a linear transformation. Rest all, you can think of it as array of numbers, but how fundamentally uh, you have to think about it as linear transformation. That would give you a geometric insight, an insight into I'm saying operates because it's a function. It's, it's not just anything. It is a function itself, in itself. Okay? It's just like a sine function or a logarithmic function. Matrix is a function. And it's useful to represent many kinds of function, a class of function known as a linear transformation. Okay? So there are various different kinds of linear transformation. Uh, I spoke to you about linear transformation that it has to operate on vectors in a certain way that L of V plus W is equal to L of V plus L of W. Okay. So he will speak about, uh, he's speaking about this shear transformation right now. So he's again speaking about how the basis vectors get transformed. Once you know the basis, like how the basis vectors get transformed, you know about the entire plane or the entire space. Mind you, I'm just talking about the plane, the R2 space here, because that can be geometrically thought of as. You can have a geometry look on it if you move to a uh, move for more than three dimensions higher than three dimensions you cannot talk about geometry in there right you cannot see the geometry here yeah, even if there is a geometry you cannot see the geometry so, so uh, it will be useful to just talk about two dimensional spaces you can easily move that you can easily move towards higher dimension cases So this, this transformation takes the entire space to a straight line, this entire line. So it just goes a dimensional, a dim, it's a dimensional loss, you can say. It goes back to one dimension. A two-dimensional space is transformed to a one-dimensional space, a line, a straight line. Uh, he spoke about linearly dependent vectors, that is, vectors which can be represented uh, in terms of each other, as a scalar multiple of each other. Just like x, x cap and y cap were not linearly dependent, they were linearly independent. They were independent vectors. That means you cannot represent one in terms of the other. But linearly dependent means you can represent one in terms of other. That's exactly what he spoke about. He showed you in here. I'll show you it again. So that is uh, how matrix were useful to represent a linear transformation of the space, of any space for, the, so for that matter. Okay, here we spoke about R2, but you can, you can talk about for any space, of any dimension, okay? As the dimension increases, the size of the matrix increases. The size of the vector increases, okay? So I spoke to you about shear, 
I showed you an animation for shear transformation, a 90 degree rotation, also different rotation. Uh, so rotation is a linear transformation. It's an obvious linear transformation. Shear transformation is not a trivial example of linear transformation. There are many other examples, okay? So you can just, just take a matrix, put in any numbers in it, okay? That would be a linear transformation. And it's, you can, in mathematics, you classify how the linear transformation of R2 would look like, how linear transformation of other space would look like. But that classification is purely for mathematical sake and going into that would require a lot of machinery and a lot of mathematical knowledge. Uh, it was more for your understanding of matrices. So since I spoke of matrices as functions, okay, just like a 90 degree rotation was this, okay, that means it operates on a certain vector, any vector, suppose x, it's a vector, okay. It's a function, okay? If I call this as L1, so L1 operates on a function on a vector x. Similarly, since we spoke about composition of mappings, I, I don't think we spoke about it, but I think you know when how do you compose two mappings, okay? Just like uh, if I take two mappings, F composition G, that means first I operate G on X, then F on G. That is, first I operate G on X, then I operate F on G. Okay, so it is read from right to left. Okay, uh, so it might be easier for Urdu or Arabic readers. Right to left, read, right to left. Okay, so you start with this transformation on X and then you go on F. So that is how you thought about for a function. Exactly that's how we will think about for matrices because matrices are a type of function, okay? Are a special class of functions known as linear map or linear transformation. Okay, by this time, I think you must have, uh, the word linear would have been taken nature to you because I use it so many times. I think the animations made it quite clear. This, this, this animation was again from the channel three blue, one brown. Uh, okay, so I'll just give you an example how composition of function in matrices would look like, and hereby enforcing how matrix multiplication would work, how exactly matrix multiplication would work. Okay, okay, so this was the shear transform, this was 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. So the output, okay, output of any vector, you can first rotate that vector 90 degree anti-clockwise, then apply the shear transform to it. So that final vector, the final, there would be a final output, there would be a single final output for each vector. So this entire transformation, okay, this, this is one single transformation. And how does it, how does it come out to be, okay? How do we come, how do we arrive at this transformation? Huh? What is a single picture for this transformation? That is how we'll move forward to matrix multiplication. Okay. So uh, one way to think about it, it is our unit vector one zero has been transformed to zero one. Now our unit vector zero one has been transformed to negative one, zero, okay, exactly, by this rotation transform, this 90 degree rotation transformation, okay. So why am I speaking about unit vectors? Again, if you talk about unit vectors or the basis vectors, you know about the entire transformation. So it just suffices to know the transformation for unit vectors, okay, because matrix multiplication, uh, as I showed you, here the multiplication gives you how this how this vector gets transformed how exactly this vector gets transformed okay and now we'll move forward to matrix multiplication we'll conclude the lecture so we exist okay <laughs>
Okay, sure, sure, sure. I'll just uh, I'll just conclude it speaking about uh, matrix multiplication in here. Uh, so, how this matrix multiplication would look like? Okay. So basically, okay, how this exactly would look like is first I would since the unit vector one zero has been transformed to zero one. And this vector again would be transformed using this vector, this transformation. Okay, so this is how it would how it would get transformed. So which will be equal to um, I think one one and. Okay, so the final matrix, the final matrix would look like Okay, the final matrix would look like this. This is how this entire transformation looks like the 90 degree rotation, then the shear transformation. This matrix codes in itself, it stores the information of how this entire transformation, this transformation in whole looks like. So basically, what I did here was I transformed this vector. What is the transformation for this vector? Using this transformation, it's one one, and this vector is it's the same. It does not change. It remains. Okay, because uh, if you remember, shear transform did not change the vectors on the x-axis. So this is a vector on the x-axis. Okay, it does not change. It just changes the vectors on the y-axis, the shear transformation. Okay, it was something like this. Okay, so intuitively, geometrically, I think you understand why negative one zero still goes to negative one zero because this is the shear transformation, and this is how the transformation, this composition map looks like. So matrix multiplication, matrix multiplication is basically. Synonymous to composition of functions. Composition of functions. Uh, why I spoke about it in this manner? Because next lecture we will be talking about something called as eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, that is a very crucial point in linear algebra. And that again simplifies the matrix and the transformation more. It simplifies it further, and you can uh, you can get a broader picture of how that transformation looks like. So, since in in programming you often come across matrices, so these ideas would be very useful for you to keep an eye of how this matrix is really work is really working, how it is really operating on vectors, how it is really behaving with other matrices because operation of uh, uh, matrix multiplication is just synonymous to composition of functions i think uh, this gave you a slight idea of uh, what matrices really are how you can think about matrices why do we abstract something uh, why why is the abstraction of a vector space was necessary and this vector space can be anything this vectors can be anything for that matter which behaves like vectors not necessarily the vectors that we think about in physics that is exactly the interplay that linear algebra gives you the machinery that linear algebra gives you to interact between uh, the vectors that we thought about in physics uh, the vectors as list of numbers that you thought about in computer science or just as abstract objects in mathematics that is the strength of mathematics that it can move abstractly okay proofs using matrices can be simplified further just by using linear transformation or abstract mathematics. It can be shortened at least 50%. Okay. Uh, it is also quoted by a famous mathematician, Emil Artin, who said that uh, he was a prominent number theorist of the last century. Uh, so he quoted that uh, proofs of matrices can be shortened at least 50% using abstract mathematics. So abstract mathematics is not that dry, okay? It, it is very useful. It is very handy. Uh, it 
it makes things easy for you, not difficult for you. I think uh, I'll wrap up now. I think you have a broader idea of how matrix multiplication works. Uh, that is that was my aim of this lecture. Uh, I think you get an idea of linear independence or linear dependence, and also to watch for the animation. I this channel from C Blue One Brown. He has animations on linear algebra, so that might be useful for you once you come for the next lectures. So you can get the idea of eigenvalues and eigenvectors once I talk about that in the next lecture. Uh, thank you. I'll wrap up now. Hey, thanks, Arish. Uh...